Hello everyone, welcome back to our class. The outcomes of this presentation. After this presentation, you are supposed to be able to 1. Use to and enough correctly. 2. Identify new vocabulary. Read and understand the text. Listen and complete the sentences. 5. To write a story. Now we are with our grammar book with the title Two and Enough, pages 24 and 25. Two and Enough. Let's take a look at these pictures, read the sentences, then we are going to discuss the grammar rule. Take a look at the picture of this girl. This jacket is too big for me. Pay attention to two, and it is followed by the adjective big. This jacket is too big for me, which means that the jacket is very big. It is not suitable for the girl. The second example, the exam was too difficult. Also, we have two followed by an adjective which is difficult that means hard okay moving to enough there is enough food for everyone we have pay attention enough followed by food which is a noun the second example this car is big enough for my family we have enough before enough we have an adjective so out of these examples, we can understand that two is always followed by adjectives. After two, we have an adjective. Always after two, we have an adjective. And it means that the thing is more than we need. For enough, there is enough food for everyone. And this car is big enough. So, always after enough we have nouns before enough we have adjectives like enough food enough and then we have a noun big enough we have adjective followed by enough so the meaning of enough is the thing that is good for us it is suitable so after we discussed the, the examples, we can uh, guess that two, we can use two before adjectives. It shows that something is more than enough. Enough, we use enough <coughs> before nouns or after adjectives. It shows that something is as much as we need. So two means that it is more than enough, more than we need, and we use it only with adjectives. Enough is used before nouns or after adjectives, and it shows that the thing is as much as we need. Do exercise 8 in your grammar book page 24, where we have to complete the sentences, right, to, or enough. So the first thing that you have to do is to decide if the, uh, to take a look at the words before and after the uh, blank. And depending on if we have an adjective or a noun, you are going to decide. Exercise 8. One, he is too old to be in the team. We have old, which is an adjective, and that's why we are going to use two. These shoes aren't big for me. We have big, which is an adjective. After the adjectives, we are going to use enough. So these shoes aren't big enough for me. Are you strong to lift that bag? Are you strong enough? We have an adjective. After adjectives, we are going to use enough. Unfortunately, many rivers are polluted to swim in. Polluted is an adjective. Before the adjectives, we use two. So, rivers 
are too polluted to swim in. Five. These, those clothes are big for me to wear. Are too big. Big is an adjective. Before the adjectives, we are going to add two. Is there food for everyone? Food is a noun. So before nouns, we are going to use enough. So is there enough food for everyone? Here is the answers of exercise 8 in your grammar book, page 24. In your grammar book, page 25, exercise 9 and 10 are homework. Exercise 9 and 10 are homework, page 25 in your grammar book. You have to, in exercise number 9, write the words in the correct order to make sentences or and questions. Take a look at number 1. We have words that you have to order to make sentences or questions. Number 1, the party is loud too. The party is too loud. Whenever you have a question mark, know that you are going to form a question. And and whenever we don't have a question mark, it's going to be a um, sentence. In exercise 10, you are going to look at the picture and write sentences with two or enough depending on the pictures. Uh, in number one, the music loud. So in the picture, you can see that the people are annoyed by the music. So we know that the music is too loud and you can complete depending on the picture so don't forget that exercise 9 and exercise 10 are a homework and you should do it on tuesday now i want you to open your class book page 28 on the reading part the title is lost at the carnival Let's read the text together. After I read the text, you have to read it and to send me a video for you while you are reading the text. Lost at the Carnival It was the sunniest day of the year. Harry and Emily were very excited because they were at the, carnif the carnival with their mom and dad. Harry had a superhero costume with a long red cape. Emily was dressed up as a pop star with a sparkly dress and sunglasses. Harry and Emily loved the parade. They waved at the floats and they looked at all the wonderful costumes and masks. They danced to, the, to music from the band. Just then, a crowd of dancers and people on stilts came down the street. The dancers moved between Harry and his family. Harry tried to push through the crowd, but the dancers moved too fast. Harry could not get away, so he moved down the street with the dancers. Suddenly, Harry thought he saw a stage. He climbed on, onto it and looked around for his parents. But then Harry started to move. He wasn't on a stage. He was on a float with a lot of dancers on it. Harry picked up a microphone. Hello, he said, and his voice came through all the speakers in the street. I am Harry. Mom, Dad, Emily, can you hear me? Harry saw his mom and dad running through the crowd. Where have you been? They said. And where is Emily? I don't know, said Harry. I thought Emily was with you. So we are talking about a family. Emily, uh, Emily Harry, mom and dad were at a carnival. It was a, it is a, like a big party where people wear special costumes. We have parades, floats, crowds. They are celebrating. Harry and Emily wore their costumes and go and went to the um, carnival with their 
family. Suddenly, there was a crowd of people and dancers that came between Harry and his family, and he got lost. He thought that he saw a stage, so he went up to this stage, but this stage was moving, and he discovered that it was a float, not a stage. He picked up the microphone, and he started sh shouting for his family. He saw his mother, his mother and father running alone without Emily and asking him where has he been and where is Emily. Harry did not know where is Emily, so the problem now that Emily is lost. So here is the idea of this text, which is lost at the carnival. Moving to exercise 3, page 28, where we have to complete the sentences. Read again and write the words. The words are costumes. We all know that costumes are the special clothes that the actors wear for a play. Cape, it is a long piece of a cloth that is used in the costumes for heroes. Like Superman, he has a red cape. Stage is where the actors stand to uh, perform a play. A dress, it is a piece of cloth which is worn by girls. Float, it is a moving stage decorated with different colors. It has dancers on it. Crowd, which is a a big number of people who are together. Number one, Harry's costume had a long red cape. Two, Emily had a sparkly dress. Three, Harry and Emily looked at the wonderful costumes. Four, Harry could not push through the crowd. Five, Harry thought he was a he was a stage and six Harry was on a float. Moving to exercise number one, page 29, where we are going to talk about the important words in the text. Your homework is to find the definition of these words in your dictionary, in your workbook, and to write it in your notebook. So find the definitions of these words from the dictionary in your workbook and write the answers and the definitions in your notebook. So in picture number one, we have parade. Two, we have speakers. Three, mask. Four, float. Five, microphone. Six, crowd. Seven, dancers, eight, stilts. So find the definition of these words from your workbook in the dictionary and write the definitions in your notebook. Move to your workbook, page 26 and 27, where we have another text to read with the title, The School Carnival. Let's read together. The School Carnival. The day of the school carnival arrived. Barney was nervous and excited. This year, he was in charge of the parade. He had a piece of paper, of paper so he knew what to do. Everything was ready. All the pupils had their masks on, on and were waiting to begin. He picked up the microphone. Hello and welcome to the parade, he said. He waited to hear the crowd clap and cheer, but they were talking and laughing and weren't looking at him or listening to him. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the school parade, he said. Nothing happened. His voice wasn't coming through the speakers. The music wasn't playing. Some, the, the music wasn't playing. 
something was wrong. Barney hurried over to the speaker and looked at it. He saw the plug on the floor. I did not play plug in the speaker. He thought. He quickly plugged it and in it in and ran back to the microphone. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the parade, he said. The crowd heard him and stopped talking. They started to clap and cheer. The music for the parade started playing. Here are the pupils of the class 7B, said Barney, and his classmates started the parade. The costumes were wonderful and the sparkly masks looked great. Everyone in the crowd was smiling and laughing. Barney smiled and waved to his mom and dad in the audience. They cheered and waved back. Barney felt relaxed and happy. The parade was going to be fantastic. So, we are talking about a school carnival where we have a boy whose name name is Barney. He is in charge, which means that he is responsible of the parade. He wrote notes on a piece of paper to let him know what to do. And everything was ready. The students were ready, wearing their costumes and their masks. Barney hold the microphone on and said hello and start um, to talk with the crowd but his voice wasn't coming out of the speakers so there was something wrong he went back to look to take a look at the speakers and he found that he has forgotten to plug to plug on the speakers he plugged them on and he ran back to the stage he hold the microphone again and said ladies and gentlemen welcome to the parade the crowd of the students heard him and they started cheering and clapping for him. Then the parade start, started. He saw his mom and dad in the audience and he waved back to him. He was very excited and very relaxed and happy because everything was going uh, fantastic. Now let's do the exercises together. number one read the story number the picture in the correct order so number one we have Barney trying to talk to the um, trying to check that everything is uh, perfect and going well in picture number two we have Barney where he is talking to the audience but they can't hear him and three we have Barney when he discovered that he forgot to block to plug in the speakers. In number four, he plugged on the speakers and the audience heard him. In picture number five, which is the last one, here is Barney waving for his mom and dad and the parade is going perfectly. So here is the number of the pictures. Exercise two, where we have to read and to write true or false. Number one, Barney felt nervous about his school parade. True. Two, all the students were on stilts. False. Three, when Barney picked up the microphone, his voice was too loud. False. Barney forgot to plug in the speakers. True. Five, the crowd could hear Barney, but the music did not, did not work. False. Six, Barney's mom and dad came to watch the parade. It is true. Exercise number one, page 27. We have to read and to circle. This exercise is in your workbook. Harry got lost in a parade TV program or costume he got lost on in a parade two the people were wearing speakers or pop stars or masks masks three his voice came through the band speakers or dancers his voice came through the speakers four a float cheer stilts was floating the parade, following the parade, a float was following the parade.
Five, he spoke into a mask microphone speaker and everyone stopped talking. He spoke into a microphone. Six, the people on parade stilts float were much taller than the people in the crowd, the people on stilts. Exercise two in your workbook, page 27. Read the story on page 26, match the pictures on to the sentences. Number one, the crowd cheered when the team soccered a goal, B. Two, the audience clapped at the end of the play with picture A. Three, I have plugged in the TV, picture D. Dad waved to us at the station, picture C. To exercise three in your workbook page 27 where we have to look and match the questions and the answers number one what is happening at the school with F it's the school carnival paid number two who are the dancers with a class 7b three what is Barney holding with C, a microphone. Excellent. Four. What is the crowd doing? E. Excellent. Clapping and cheering. Five. What are Barney's mom and dad doing? Excellent. They are waving to him. And six, which is the last one. He has plugged in all the speakers with B yes he has let's move to the listening part in your class book page 29 your class book unit 3 page 29 where we are going to listen and to do the exercises number two we have in listening the quest question two read the story on page 28 again, what do you think happened to Emily? Three, listen to what happens next where you write. And exercise four, listen again and match. I'm going to read for you. Listen, please, and try to answer the question. The dancers were in front of Emily and she could not see Harry. Just then, a crowd of people on stilts walked between Emily and her parents. The people on stilts were a lot taller than Emily. She could not push through the crowd and she was scared. She moved down the street with the crowd. Suddenly, Emily heard a voice. It came from the speakers in the street. Harry, Emily! Where are you? Can you hear me? It was Harry. Emily shouted Harry's name, but the music was too loud. Just then, a man on stilts looked down and saw Emily. Are you okay? he asked. No, said Emily. My brother is calling me, but I can't see him. The man left Emily up now. She was high enough to see Harry on the float. She shouted and waved to Harry. Harry saw her and waved back. Emily's parents laughed when they saw Emily on top of the crowd. The man on stilts put Emily down and she ran to meet Harry and her parents. She was glad to be back with her family again. Now they could enjoy the rest of the carnival. So this is the text that we were talking uh, that we were the complete the complement of the text that we read in page 28. So what happened to Emily is the following. Emily was looking at and the at the dancers but suddenly she could not see Harry, then a crowd of people on stilts walked between Emily and her parents, so she got lost. She 
she was lost between the crowds and she was scared. Suddenly, she heard Harry's voice on the speakers calling her name. She shouted Harry's name, but they could not hear her because the music was very loud. A man on a stilt saw Emily and he asked her if she is okay. She said that she has got lost of her family and she can't find them. He hauled her up and now she is taller than the crowd. She saw her family and she shouted and waved back to them. They saw her and they laughed when they saw her above all the crowds. Emily was able to return back to her family. She was very happy and they now could enjoy the carnival. So let's do exercise four together. Listen and match. Number one, the dancers with C were in front of Emily. Two, the people on stilts with A were a lot taller than Emily. Three, Harry called Emily through the speakers. Four, Emily with E shouted Harry's name. Five, Emily's parents with B laughed when they saw Emily. So here is the answers of the listening exercise. Let's move to the writing part in our class book, page 30. Your class book, page 30, um, we, are, we have a sample of writing a story. We are going to read this sample and after that we are going to discuss how to write the beginnings and ending of a story. So, so the story with the title The Costume by Robbie Turner. It was the day before the carnival. Liam was outside the costume shop. There, uh, there was a wonderful firefighter costume in the window. Liam wanted the costume, but it was too late. A label on the costume said, sold. At home, Liam made a carnival costume, but his costume wasn't as good as the costume in the shop. He, hu he hung his costume on, this, on his bedroom door and went to bed. The next morning, Liam woke up early. He looked at his bedroom door and saw the firefighter costume from the shop. He was, there was a note on the costume, it said, to Liam from mom and dad. Liam was very excited. He put on the costume and ran downstairs. He hugged his mom and dad. You are the best parents in the world, he said. So, we, are, we read a story about a boy whose name is Liam. He was standing um, on, in the front of a costume shop. He wanted to buy a costume of a firefighter, but there was a label that said that the costume was sold. So the time was, what, too late. He went back to his home and he prepared his costume for the carnival and he went to bed. When he Woke, woke up in the morning, he find the costume from the shop that he wanted hung in his bedroom door with a note says to Liam from mom and dad. He put on the costume and he da ran downstairs to thank his mom and dad for this beautiful costume. Now, let's see how did the writer begin the story. He began the story with, number one, when the story takes place, it was the day before the carnival. So the first point that he started with writing when the story takes place. 
Moving to the second point, he wrote who and where the characters are. We knew that the character is Liam and he was outside the costume shop. Number three, what the characters are doing, thinking or feeling from the story that we read, Liam wanted the costume, but he was too late. So to begin writing a story, the first point that you should start with is to write when the story takes place. After that, you should write who and where the characters are. Then you have to write what the characters are doing, thinking, or feeling. This is how to start writing a story. Moving to the endings. When we want to end a story, you have to write, number one, what happened in the end, in the example that we read, at the end, he put the costume on and he ran downstairs. Or you can write how the characters feel. Liam, for example, was very excited. So when you are writing the ending of a story, you can write, number one, what happened at the end? Or you can write how did the characters feel? So this is how to begin and how to end a story. You begin a story by writing when it takes place and who, where and where the characters are and what the characters, uh, what, what are the characters thinking, feeling or doing. And when you end a story, you should write what happened at the end and how the characters felt. Now, in exercise number four, we have to read these sentences to decide if these sentences are are the beginning or the ending of a story. In number one, Lucy was very happy. She ran home to tell her parents about her exciting day. We can understand that it is an end of a story. Number two, Danny and his brother felt very pleased, but they decided to be more careful in the future. We are talking about the feelings of the characters, so this is the ending. Moving to three, it was a rainy Saturday afternoon and Belly and Kate were sitting in the living room. It is the beginning. We have the when the story takes place and who, where the characters are. So it is the beginning. Four, it was a lovely warm day. Julie was reading a book in the garden when she suddenly heard someone call her name. So we have in this sentence, we have when the story takes place, which is a lovely warm day. And we have who and where the characters and what are the characters doing. We have Julie was reading a book in the garden when she suddenly heard someone call her name. So it is a beginning. Here is an example for you that I wrote so you can follow the steps of this example. I wrote a story. First of all, I began with the title of the story and the title is Sally's New Book. First of all, I am going to start with when <coughs> the story takes place. So it was the end of the week and the weekend is about to start. So I, I read when the story takes place. Now I'm going to start with who, where the characters are. Sally was going home after a long day at the school. She arrived at the house, changed her clothes, washed her hands and got her lunch. She finished her homeworks, on the evening, she was sitting alone, feeling bored and had nothing to do. Suddenly, mom and dad entered to her room holding a present. It was a new book that she always wanted to get. She was very happy. This is the 
the ending of my story, I am talking about the feelings of the characters. She was very happy and excited to start reading the book. She hugged her mom and dad. Thank you very much. I love you, she said. So now you can try to write a story just like this one. Start with when the story takes place. Write who and where the characters are and what the characters are doing, thinking and feeling. And end your story with what happened at the end or how the characters feel. Write the story and send it to me. Write your story in your notebook and write, send it to me. Move to your workbook, page 28, where we are going to do the exercises that are related to the writing part. Exercise number one, look and write the beginning of the story. We have words and we have to make the, the beginning of the story. Lucy at home make costume school play. Lucy was at home. She was making her costume for the school play. Number two, she finished costume feel happy. She finished her costume and she felt happy. She superhero. She was going to be a superhero. So here we wrote sentences for the beginning of a story. Now let's move to exercise two. Look and write the feelings words. We have disappointed, excited, surprised, and nervous. Number one, we have nervous. Number two, disappointed. Three, surprised. And four, we have excited. So here is the uh, answer to exercise number one. One and exercise number two in your workbook, page 28. Exercise three in your workbook, page 28, is a homework. You have to complete the story by using the pictures in exercise three. In exercise two, take a look at the pictures in exercise two and write a story about these pictures in exercise three. Do it, write a story depending on the pictures and send me your answers. At the end of this presentation, here is a message for you. A dream does not become reality through magic. It takes sweet determination and hard work.